You're listening to Peterborough's Community. Assalamu alaikum dear listeners. Welcome to Slam Radio, the voice of knowledge and inspiration. I'm Metab and uh, today we are thrilled to have you join us for a brand new episode of Education Matters. Education Matters is your go-to destination for all things education. Whether you are a student, a teacher or a parent, or just someone who is passionate about the power of learning, this is the show for you. Each week, we will dive into the world of education, exploring the latest innovation, trends and challenges in the field. We'll also bring you inspiring stories, expert interviews and practical tips to help you navigate the educational landscape. And the best part? Well, we're not here to lecture you. We are here to have a meaningful conversation and engage with you our wonderful listeners. So if you have any questions, thoughts or ideas about education, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can get in touch by calling into our show on 01733-602-133. That's 01733-602-133. You can also uh, text us if you don't want to speak to us. That's all right. <laughs> you can always text us. That is 0741119 We are also live on uh, the social Facebook, YouTube, X and Twitch. Please do uh, leave us a comment on there, uh, whether it is a live show, even if it's afterwards. Um, you know, we are looking for your thoughts and your feedback. So then that could be a discussion part of our show. So... Grab your favourite cup of tea, settle in and let's embark on this educational journey together because education matter starts now. And before we begin with our show, we'd just like to give salam alaikum to Brother Shamir. Wa alaikum salam, Brother Tabi. You okay? What, what's your favourite cup of tea? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> uh, kachi cha. <laughs> That's not good, Two sugars, it? milk, so every morning. This, uh, water, yeah? Well, water with sugar. Water with sugar. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind crack jar after this, you know. It's, uh, I think the weather, the weather will uh, suit it. Definitely. definitely, indeed. Yeah. How are you, my brother? You okay? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. <coughs> good week. Good as it can be. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how about yours? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, the time's going really quick. And uh, you know, we're we so busy. This is uh, the only time I catch up with you now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Apart from obviously, uh, when even on the Saturdays we're we're working out, we're not really catching up. But uh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we've been. Uh, um, I think all the thanks are due to uh, Brother Faisal who has uh, forced us to do this, because otherwise we would be um, just t- discussing other things um, other than just having a chat about things that really matter. You know, so uh, thank you, Brother Faisal, um, you know, giving us the opportunity to just come and have a chat. Absolutely. Uh, they just don't allow tea in here. That would uh, be they nice. don't even add water either. You, you, know, you smuggled in some uh, collar balls. You can't see those on the <laughs> camera. Come on. <laughs> right. So, Brother Shamir, as we were discussing earlier, you know, when we are um, a couple of days ago planning our um, show, you know, yes. what we are looking to focus on today is education starts at home of course definitely Definitely. and yeah of course and i think today um it'll be nice because we got a brother who you know when they heard about the show they were wanted to call in um to look into discussing more of the primary side um primary age students and how you know they are parents themselves how they can support uh, and how our listeners out there can support their child who are in primary through the uh, phonics and how they are used in school to help students progress, uh, especially with the language and understand, obviously, in terms of spelling. It's a massive part of, uh, I think, primary education, Mm. phonics. It is, indeed. Especially in the early years. Well, we are hoping that the the theme of today, uh, we're going to look into having, you know, discussing the teachable moments at home, uh, how... 
every day, you know, there are situations and opportunities for learning. So, you know, sharing practical examples of turning these small daily activities into more of an educational moment for our lovely children. Then we're going to go into the parental involvement in education, you know, um, that would be obviously linked to the school as to what sort of involvement, the crucial part that they play, uh, you know, whether it's uh, engaging through parents' evening or just having a supportive home environment uh, for their child. The next one, I think it's a big one, technology. See, yeah, I think we've, we've touched upon it in our previous shows. Um, we have. And I think, Pete, some, especially with the, some of the comments in uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, some people didn't <coughs> want us I mean, to talk a I mean, that was more of a phone. Yeah, I mean, the show that we, we had about uh, managing behaviour, uh, you know, oh, having yes. difficulties behaviour, yes. I mean, it does touch, but we're, today is more about, uh, you know, specifics, the education side of it, how our home can be in an educational, well, sh that is where the education starts. You know, people, you, you, you are yeah, home for many positive, years. I think the positive sides of uh, using technology. Yeah, and uh, th that's what we're going to talk about as well. And then it's just balancing the screen time. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that we look to explore the importance of reading. I hope later on, but the MTS can touch upon this as well. Start as early as possible from primary um, and, you know, sharing tips and creating in creating a reading friendly home <coughs> environment. Um, and I think that is very important to start from an early age. Um, we'll obviously look at the other elements of it as well, you know, setting learning goals and the life skills. Got a um, whole, uh, dissertation going on here, buddy. We have indeed, yeah. <laughs> and then just setting a, setting a, uh, you know, a supportive learning environment for their child. Yeah. So I think if we, uh, so we'll do. The plan is if we were to just do secondary for the first, so that is where myself. Uh, and that's you, our specialty, yeah, of course. Will I mean for the secondary age? children um even though uh, i was <laughs> don't fit primary your secondary but um as teachers obviously what we can share how a home can be should be where education starts and then inshallah our brother Imtiaz will be calling in sh shortly after the break uh to discuss uh about the importance of phonics and how uh that could be should be a daily practice at home right so teachable moments at home um you know, how how important is that? You know, one thing that, you know, when we were planning this, I think that we mentioned was, how, how many times do you think parents say to their kids, don't do this, don't do that, stop it, don't, don't. Too many. Don't. I think uh, don't. it's far too many times. <laughs> uh, and I think we, we, we end up uh, almost, sometimes almost saying it out of habit. Yeah. Whereas we're so used to saying it, we, we wouldn't know what else to say. We automatically would jump into that, uh, I think, the negative start. Yeah, and I think it's quite interesting because the, you know, when we start saying don't do this, you know, I always look back, I think it probably not be as much of a problem now, but, you know, where, where, you know, uh, where it says do not park here. And what are the chances for you there. for someone to park there? <laughs> I think Even it's if a you human... had a nice spot next door, you'd <laughs> get back into your car and move it on purpose, <laughs> just so you can do. What is it? it? I mean, I think if I ask you personally, yeah. like you as a person, yeah, when someone says "Don't do this," you almost, I think, uh, challenge. You almost start to question and become curious of why should I not do it because <laughs> I wasn't given a reason. It was just yeah. almost like a rule: don't do it, and that's it. End of. Whereas. Mm. Then, the, especially if you're a child, sometimes you start to become curious and you start to think, okay, Why not? what will happen if I do do that? Mm. Let's see what happens. Do you see what I mean? It's like sometimes you want to find out what you don't know yeah. because in this this scenario, you won't maybe explain why not to do that thing. <laughs> and, you know, it's... Um, sorry, the reason why I just had a giggle, but the empty has a sort of door open. Um, I saw a door once with a sign on it saying... Do not open this door. <laughs> and he just put dot, dot, dot. You know what happened next. Yeah, and I think um, it's the terminology, I think, that we use with our kids especially. And I think uh, a lot of the time we say, you know, um, don't climb on that. Don't do this. Don't do that. And 
myself included like we said already uh, you know please don't take this as we're, we're lecturing on if we're learning with you guys and we're exploring these things with you um i think may, perhaps the way that we can uh use those moments and change our terminology perhaps that could be i think a, a teachable bit, a bit moment. more explanation given mm. into why not to do that thing um it's probably more important T- uh, to a teachable moments at home okay so I mean, to be honest with you, for me, I think one of the most important things you could teach at home is uh, work ethic and habits. Mm-hmm. So, for example, in school, primary or secondary, as teachers, we will always say, let's work hard, let's do this. Mm. But when you're trying to say that to a group of 30, there'll always be a few kids in there who would just be like, oh, here we go, another cliche, another, yeah. another quote, or so, or try, mm. another teacher trying to get me motivated. Yeah. But... You Not you again, yeah. Her. So yeah, there's nothing yeah. to actually inspire them. However, mm. at home, because we're focusing on our home this week, there is so many good habits parents can do um, physically. So you can show, you can lead the way. Mm. Uh, whether that's reading uh, Namaz, for example, whether that's yeah. uh, uh, reading the Grand Park, you know, like uh, so many small examples. That's instilling lead the by word. example. Lead by example. Yeah, I mean, even our religion states obviously. Yeah, of course. You know, if you want to um, get your kids to start reading them, I start reading in front of them. Get them involved. Get them involved. Show them. Um, if you're never gonna do anything in front of them, and they'll always have people telling them do this because this is right or do this because this is wrong, they will never actually really understand why am I really doing that thing. Can we can we put up a question on this for the parents? A question for okay. the parents, a question for people out there is, you know, we'd like you to get involved and, you know, whether it's through comments or calling in. Last time that your child had a homework, right, how many of you said, right, Aiden, you got homework, come, let's sit down, let's both do it. Yeah, or let's uh, investigate what the homework is about. Yeah. Or even have a conversation about it. How many times do you think there's a conversation of, I've done the homework? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, I mean to, what so t- in order to get these guys involved today, I think uh, make it easier for them, make it more generic. Mm. What good habits have you seen your child develop because of uh, something you might have shown them, because of something you might have taught them at home? Well, Keep it open and generic. This is very open. Yeah. Um, you know, some brother, it, it, we won't name. But they said, you know, slap always worked on me, didn't do any harm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, the more research <clears throat> I think that me and you were doing is to say, you know how like um, even us being at school, you know, when we were talking about some of the teachers that were saying, oh, back in the days when we were students, yeah, we always had that respect. We always had that fear of the head of maths or mm. the head teacher or someone senior. Yeah. And... I think slowly, slowly, are we, is that fading away because we're too lenient I now? I think uh, if we turn the tables, I think we sometimes, because there's such a difference in uh, generations here, mm. if we keep pounding on about, oh yeah, we got respect or we showed the elders respect, the next generation isn't automatically going to give you respect just because you're saying that. I like that, yeah. Because they can't relate to it. It's a different yeah. generation. So again, um, you can't, if we turn it around, we can't uh, mm. demand respect, but at the same time, I still think do I, things I, that I, yeah. yeah. I come across younger young minds every single day. They're yeah. so respectful. They're, yeah. we can't we can't ignore them or, or stay and silent. And would that be because you just said hello? It's, you just said how it's are you? honestly it's it's yeah, like you just mentioned, it mm. is the smallest things. I don't I probably don't even know it's the smallest things, but because I might have given them twenty seconds of my time, yeah. because I might have um, sort of <coughs> been interested. Or I've shown them something, it's very, very small. Mm. And there's so many kids out there who, are, who I don't want to miss out uh, because we're always focusing on the sort of negatives and stuff. There's so, so many kids out there in this new generation who are really respectful. And, and they are. it's not because I said to them, oh yeah, I respect my elders, you need to respect me. Mm. That won't cut it nowadays. Mm. So, do so you think also now that I, I might be wrong, but do you think... Now, uh, this day and age, because our parents, our elders, or even us, yeah. we are so busy, right? Yeah, definitely. We definitely. are so busy. When we get home, we may not have the energy 
We may not have the drive to actually sit there and have these meaningful conversation or this interaction with ourselves. our kids. Yeah. So therefore, we're like, okay, go on this iPad. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, and you know when yeah, when we definitely. when we get angry and say, oh, don't do this, don't do that. Are we just annoyed because they're distracting us? Or are we? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I, like that. I mean it's something That's that we had point. before as well. And I think. So would we would we say you know these teachable moments? Or first of all, everybody. Let's stop using "don't do this." Yeah. yeah. So let's start saying, okay, if you do this, this Explain, is going to yeah. happen. Okay. So if you do this, you know, uh, it's going to. So don't get distracted by the comments, Mr. Akram. No, no, it's, it's just something that we have to. Uh, you know, keep on top of it because people like to get involved. That's why we were, you were telling you were teaching me something there. <laughs> no, no, I think so. The first thing you know, um, we have to make sure that we're not using the uh negative terminology. Yep. So, we rather than saying, you know, um, you know, even in our schools, you know, we are always encouraged and we are trying to put in strategies where we're saying, oh, well done, so and so did this question, well done to you, well done to you. It's not like Sorry, you have only done two questions, mm. right? We're like, okay, you've done two questions. Can we get on to the third one? Yeah? yeah. So let's change the terminology, focus on the good things, and, you know, trying to find more time where we are engaging with our children. Um, parental involvement in education. Yeah, I think we what involvement that, can yeah. a parent have through, uh, with education? So you've got, uh, obviously, the most obvious ones is parents' evenings. Yep, it's that direct communication with the school, yep. with, the with the teachers, um, to understand where your child is, how they're going to get into the next steps, what can we do to close the gaps. Um, that's the most obvious uh, parental involvement. Now, we've also got some parents who are then taking that and actually make um, what's the word. Um, they're taking the advice from the parents' evenings mm. and they're actually going home and they're doing something about it. Whereas you get a lot of uh, meetings in, the par uh, in a parents' evening where even you're sitting there and you're, you're looking at the parents and you're sitting there thinking, nothing's really going to be done. But do you think that when these parents are coming to this parents' evening... It's like ticking a box sometimes. Yeah. Uh, do, you feel, do you feel, like, do you think the parents... This should be like a checkup point. It shouldn't be like, oh, by the way, your child. They should know how the child's getting on. What's the What's the easiest uh, parents' evening for you? You got five minutes with the parent, yeah. Yeah. You've got thirty, forty, sixty sometimes uh, appointments, one mm. after the other. As a as a teacher sitting there, no break. Imagine most the majority of the uh, appointments. You're almost trying to force the parent to ask, ask you a question about the child. Does it, mm. have, you, have you noticed that? Yeah, I think you get, you yeah, get, you get a small like, percentage where they really want to hear what you got to say, but, but I, really, it's about it's about your child. You should be asked. You should be already prepared before you get yes, to that appointment. That's what I mean. So I think there should be, uh, you know, like we say uh, with our mastermind that you know it's a teamwork. It's the teacher, yeah. the parent, and the, the student. student. It's yeah. a teamwork, and I think these parents' evenings there should be a checker point rather than, oh yeah, is my son in year ten? Oh okay, how's he getting on? You yeah. should know how he's getting on. You should be coming to us and saying, "Oh, last week homework, he didn't understand exactly. this." What? Or can, what, the recent assessment, yeah. he got seven, uh, grade seven. How can we improve? Or Get he's struggling. Name. He's struggling. I realized I was speaking to Aiden last week, and he said he's struggling with sociology. Exactly. Is there any reason why you think he's struggling? This so, year, this yeah. for, as a as a teacher, that would mm. be a better appointment for yeah. me. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. After thirty appointments in a row, and you get that one where have you got any questions? You're 20 seconds into the appointment. Nah, not really. Um, yeah. Just remember, like, and, uh, let's just be honest. And the times that we had, uh, when you ask, uh, how is so-and-so finding maths, for example, yeah? Oh, you tell us, you're the teacher. Exactly. But they won't, but this is the thing that they're missing. <laughs> a, you've got 30 kids uh, every hour in a classroom. So yeah, let's yeah, be I really remember. brutally honest here. Even as teachers, it's, you need to challenge us to make sure that obviously yeah. we... Uh, we're on top of... Uh, you should be more involved yeah. with that journey. It's not just teacher and the student, is it? It should be parent involved as well. Um, so be... Just to summarise, Shamir. So be prepared for the parents' evening. Have questions ready. You should know what your child is uh, up to or in terms of each subject, or where they're up to and have prepared questions which makes a more effective parents' evening. Uh, technology uh, in education. Yeah, 
So home based learning advantages and potential challenges of using technology do you want to start us off and then uh, um, yeah i mean this is a massive massive uh, development over the last uh, because of well, covid no 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 like just in general in the last decade or two years yeah? as in yeah yeah of course for, uh, for example technology now um, is instant everyone's got access to it um, it's so easy to use gone are the days where you went into school and said oh yeah my dog ate the homework not that we had dogs but <laughs> it's like that excuse has gone out the window because everything is on touch everything's accessible so i think that's one area of education where um there's been some real progress real development and it's having a big impact on um, grades yeah positively so i i agree 100% i think you know with the development of technology it has made it much easier and it's very differentiated now yeah. all my students they get diff- tasks that they are with the skills that they are struggling with and um right for ho- for home though yeah you know this is education at home um how what advice can we give to our parents in terms of uh you know technology how can that be used at home first of all uh, we mentioned obviously the communication with the schools and the teachers mm. use those parents evenings to mm-hmm. get resources off the teachers mm-hmm. english teacher is going to give you the english resources most of the resources are free out there math teacher is going to give you the math resources but youtube don't ask the ki- don't ask the child don't ask the child oh yeah what can we do today um and you go on blindfolded on google and type it in that just won't be relevant like, top it they probably be really yeah, good yeah, at that and that just, won't be just to show tick so to speak to you uh, make uh, obviously the use of the resources around you yeah. and then get the resources which you can access on these devices mm. and make a plan uh, maths for example me and you can sit here and give 10 free portals yeah. or websites on top of our heads you got I, i would always say you know if your child is struggling with any topic ask them you know how you got on with a certain subject just youtube it there'll be a teacher teaching him something use the right there avenues. are yeah. so many videos on the same topic um and just ask your child to go through that make some notes um and you know i, I mean it's something i'll summarize at the end to go on to this other point that i wanted to mention um so in terms of um i think with the time I'll, i just want to let's just go into this to summarize right and is also mentioning some of the you know brother the just mentioned about teaching your kids good habits mm-hmm. you know saying thank you saying please uh, yeah. you know make sure you get your homework done uh, sleep early wake up early right why why do we have to tell them i mean initially if it was a, uh, was there a comment or No, no, or it's a comment, but I want to drive a question from that. Why, if it was, if they started off obviously talking about the habits, for example, you would have to explain them clearly. This is the routines. These are the habits. But what if you, as a parent, you can't? Yeah, don't I agree with you. Don't constantly, every day, re- remind them. Otherwise, that's not habit. No, it? no, I'm just saying. Like, yes, you can remind them and you tell them. But if your kids is growing up, yeah, watching their mum and dad say thank you, please, they're automatic. They're gonna do it. <laughs> this is you I'm coming yeah, from so natural, uh, show process. them you know rather than telling them show them say rather than saying okay I want you to sit down and eat and I, when you're eating I don't want you to watch TV I don't want you to be on your iPad yeah you, yeah, you got to do it as well yeah, yeah definitely so weekly challenge yeah shall we do a challenge if a challenge is what good habit this week are you going to do for your child do not tell them if they are doing something to really really annoy you and you don't like it you don't want your child to have that particular habit what we want i'm one for one from you is okay. was uh shimmy yeah? the only one that comes to mind is i need to say to aiden you have to go six hours without a poo so i don't have to change <laughs> so if he does that yeah no <laughs> i've I mean, completed the challenge the challenge what we want is What we want our parents to do Shamir is we want them think of something that they don't want their child yeah, a habit that they don't want them to have and without telling them we want the, them to get their child to change by yeah, showing yeah, like that. So yeah it yeah. could be like right now yeah one thing that really bugs me leaving the doors open <laughs> Exactly. Uh, if I'm in the living room, I want to do right, it. You feel it a lot more at the minute, yeah, definitely. Because it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's not a good or bad habit, it's just a, yeah. So what I do is 
I always close it first, right? Because so how I'm many times have you closed it this week? Sorry, how many times have you closed? I it I close this week? it every time. Yeah. So first, I think the uh, you know the challenge would be show rather than say to your child for anything that you wish. Um, Do you want them to give uh, them an update next week on like they observed them? Of course. Um, of this is what you were doing. Right. This is what I was doing. Definitely, we're gonna be going into balancing screen time and love for reading with the phonics yeah. focus uh, in the next section. Um, you know, and hopefully finishing off with life skills uh, leading to setting uh, learning goals. It's important that we have goals. Um, a journey that we are traveling on and is clear between the parent and the child. Um, so far, we've been discussing obviously the education that could be done at home with the teachable moments and how um, mainly for secondary students um, who are in secondary school. So hopefully uh, the after break, it will be a focus more onto the primary. Uh, just going to take you on to a break. You're listening to Slam Radio. This is Education Matters. See you very soon. Stay tuned to Salam Radio after this short ad break. Are you looking for a career where you can make a difference? At Cross Keys Homes, we work with our local communities to create opportunities that change lives. We're looking for enthusiastic, talented people to join our team, from apprenticeships to senior management positions. Cross Keys Homes can support your development while you enjoy great employee benefits. There are so many opportunities for you to shine. Apply to join the Cross Keys Homes team at crosskeyshomes.co.uk. Are you a savvy shopper searching for the best food deals? Look no further. Adam's Cash and Carry can help you save big. We're not just a food wholesaler for takeaways and restaurants. We also welcome household customers at our warehouse in Westwood, Peterborough. Visit our website and enjoy wholesale prices on everything from drinks to flour, rice to burgers and much more. To shop, go online and collect in store. Visit adamscashandcarry.co.uk today to start your savings spree. 2020 World Buffet is inspired by the best foods from around the world. See our teppanyaki chefs grill your food to order or choose delicious Indian, Italian, Chinese, Mexican dishes and British favorites, all halal. 2020 World Buffet offers you unlimited food at a set price. Open seven days for lunch and dinner. Catering, wedding and party services available too. Call 01733 566 320 or visit 2020buffet.co.uk. 2020 World Buffet. 35 New Road, Peterborough, PE11FJ. Where can you get high quality and low prices? Amar Food Store and Halal Meat in Lincoln Road, Triangle is the place to go. Pay us a visit and take advantage of our special offers and great range of products on groceries, vegetables, fruits, and halal meat. Also, send money to Pakistan absolutely free. We have all top brands at special offers, offer free customer parking, and provide a free local delivery service. Amar Food Store and Halal Meat, 613B Lincoln Road, Peterborough. Call us on 01733 687 374. High in quality, low in prices. Worried your tenants could stop paying their rent during this cost of living crisis? Next Move Estate and Letting Agents are offering landlords 12 months' rent in advance. You'll get your rent paid for the whole year in advance. No strings attached. Too good to be true? It really is that simple. So get in touch with us today for this extremely limited offer. Call Next Move now on 01733 641 642 to find out how we can help. It's time to protect yourself against COVID-19 and flu. If you or a family member are eligible for a vaccine this winter, then you can book an appointment or find a walk-in clinic online. Just search for COVID and flu vaccines Peterborough. Even if you've had a COVID-19 or flu vaccine previously, whether it was just once or more often, it's still important to get and remain protected. So to find out more, simply search online for COVID and flu vaccines Peterborough.
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Education Matters. Uh, you are listening to Metab and Shamir, and today on Education Matters, we are discussing education starts at home. Just before the break, uh, if you just want to sum up what we've been discussing and what's coming up. Yes, so very quickly, because we've got lots more points to cover. So, teachable moments at home. Uh, we discussed about uh, setting good examples at home, leading by example as a parent. Parental involvement in education. We discussed about uh, making the most out of parents' evenings opportunities, making the most out of communication with the school. Technology in education. We discussed the gap in generations um, positively. So, loads of resources now available on the World Wide Web. Um, loads of free so resources available for key subjects. Um, and now, moving on to balancing screen time. Yes, I mean, this... I think this has become a new problem, isn't it? Yes, I mean, this side of the yeah. show, I just wanted to mention, is also is going to be more of a focus on primary. And, uh, you know, Brother Imtiaz is going to join us... Um, as and when and then he will be able to just go through uh, some of the primary stuff um, that he has prepared so screen time obviously very important how much we allow our students I mean it's in, we've got to balance it out you know uh, I don't think there's there's any possible way for you to say okay no screen time at all yeah it's very hard it's, it just becomes too tricky um, I think as soon as long as you know how you said about you know training our kids showing them good examples train them trust them so like you know you can say okay you can watch an ipad for a half an hour imagine after half an hour hey go my half an hour's up you see what i mean so training them in a way that they realize why there's a limit on screen time yeah but then does that apply to you as well you know I are think you it should yeah it should doesn't it, it should, it should. Uh, you know how much time we spend um, so I think, you know, like, like we were saying earlier with secondary, primary as well, just set an example rather than, you know, telling them this is what I want you to do, this is what I want you to do, and that is it. Okay. Um, you know, in terms of um, cultivating a love for reading, you know, th as you can understand, reading very, very important in primary. Um, You've got to be able to, you know, not just... We don't want to consider reading as just, you know, the actual simple term of just being able to read, but understanding. Taking um, information you know, in, following, obviously, literature. Yeah. It's really important to the life skills. And, you know, how many times have you had, like, the worded questions, question 2022 20, on the exam papers, and they don't understand what the question is because of... The English, the not the yeah. Rest, yeah. So, um, you know, in terms of reading and how reading and phonics could work in primary... We will have, um, you know, Badim Imtiaz, obviously first he's going to share his view and then we go from there. Just see this. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello, Asalaamu Alaikum. How are you, brother? You okay? Yeah, good, good. Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Shamir. Thanks for having me on. Asalaamu um, brother. Wa so really just bear with us one moment, brother, because your uh, volume is very, very low. So I'm just going to see if we can, uh, you probably be, you probably know better how to turn these up than I do. I'm just trying to see if I can increase the volume of your... <laughs> right, if you want to try that now, please. Should I just talk a little bit louder? Please, yeah, if you, you talk yeah, a little bit louder, then shouting. we're trying to turn it up from here. Yeah, so we're just going on to talking about um, cultivating the love of uh, learning and how reading is important, and you know, with, especially in primary. And we're having problems where... Uh, students are struggling to answer some of the more complex questions with the context, you know, the, towards the end of the paper, um, purely because they couldn't, they don't understand what the question was asking us. So if you want to just, um, you know, talk us through about reading, especially from primary. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, I, you guys were talking about like, you know, teachers and parents' evenings. And, and I was thinking, like, as a parent, me, um, I don't mean to sound like, um, you know, like completely removed from reality, but, but I actually take responsibility for my own children's education. Mm -hmm. I feel like teachers will do the best they can, but I think, Shamir, you said, didn't you, 30 kids, one hour, you know, there's not much, there's not much Absolutely, that you can um, yes. do in that time. So as a parent, I just think, you know what, my kids sometimes come home and say, I don't like my biology teacher, and I'm like, well, that's your problem. 
Mm. Like literally, it doesn't matter whether you like the teacher or not. It doesn't matter if you've got disruptive children in the class or not. Mm. You've got to you've got to have that that emphasis at home. So on the phonics, um, I think all parents, especially parents of kids who are like three or four years old, they should they should invest in a in a in a book. Um, I I bought one when my my eldest child now who's now twenty was only three. I bought a book called Jolly Phonics, mm. which is one that gets used in a lot of schools. And it's a complete workbook and it tells you about different letters and it lets kids color in once they've learned a letter and it teaches them how to hold a pencil and they really fall in love with it. And um, and if you do that and if you actually stick to it, because there's like a set routine, you've got to have 10 minutes a day, every day, five days a week, do it over a period of maybe seven or eight weeks and your child gets to learn every single sound in the English language. Mm. So and it's amazing. fun for them. So when they go to school, literally, my, my child went to school and, and she was reading and my teacher was like, well, my child's teacher was like, um, oh, we've learned this and we learned that. And I was like, no, no, she can read. And then a week later, oh, we've learned this, we've learned that. And I was like, no, no, Ikra can read. And, and then three weeks in, the teacher was like, oh, my God, Ikra can read. And I was like, yes, I've been, <laughs> no, literally, I've been trying to tell you this. So I think the parents do need to, to step up. I think you teachers... Genuinely, not just saying it because it's your show, but you teachers have got a tough ask, like 30 kids. I was thinking if a parent can give their child 10 minutes a day, every day, mm. and it has to be undivided, whether it's you read them a book or whether you teach them phonics or you just help them with their homework, 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. They're your children for heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Compare that, to, compare that to a teacher who's got maybe five hours in primary school with a group of 30. Mm. You, know, you divide five hours by 30, you're, you're, not, you're getting like 10 minutes per child. That's if you ever get one-to-one time and you just don't. You don't. Um, I just wanted to um, just ask, yeah. just to elaborate, elaborate on a few things. You know, you mentioned about the routine that you had um, and, ha- you know, the, you said about undivided attention. If you can... Just elaborate on that. How important was the routine for you as a father and then, you know, for your daughter as well? And then, you know, if you can just let our listeners know the undivided attention, what do we mean by that? And how difficult do you think it is now for a parent, especially, to give that? So I don't think it's difficult at all. Honestly, when a parent says, oh, do you know what? I don't have time. I'm like, you have children. How can you last 10 minutes in a day, like for your child? What? Imagine if somebody said, I haven't got 10 minutes in a day for my mum. Mm. Like as a full grown adult, you'd be like, what the hell is wrong with you, right? <laughs> I so agree. Makes it you home, it? Yeah. I, just, I just, I don't buy it. And what I mean by undivided attention is, look, I'm going to take you away from the screen. That's mm-hmm. a big thing. Take you into a quiet room. Actually open up the box, which has got the book, which, which, which we're going to cover. It's going to be a national routine. Mm. I'm going to sit there and we're actually going to spend time together. We're going to talk about it. We, we don't have to be like regimental and no, you're going to read this. Not that at all. Mm. Look, if you have that time and it's like we do a bit of work and, you know, the child, you know, has a joke and you can have a joke and it's fine. That's absolutely fine. But you have got to have that time. And then the second thing is, you know, like I think we say this as a Pakistani parent, right? And you guys are Pakistanis as well, obviously. Like you know, you see on TV when when the when the English parent takes their child to bed and they read to him, and it's it's such a for us it seems like it's such an English thing to do because we didn't get that as children, mm. right? Our parents didn't read to us because our parents couldn't read, right? Or certainly in my case, my parents couldn't read, but. You almost feel like you're being a coconut by taking your children <laughs> upstairs to bed with a book. But you do it. Like, I, I, yeah. I did it. I did it. Sometimes and, it's good to be a coconut. The, you, sometimes you have to. And I think in cases like this, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, individual time, your youngest goes to bed early. So my youngest will go to bed at 8, second youngest 8.30, third youngest 9 o'clock, whatever. Take them individually. Give them their individual time. But crucially, between the ages of 3 and 5, if you can just get them reading. Um, and then just the final point I wanted to make was, um, Shamir, you mentioned technology, and I think, Mithab, you said there's loads of really good resources. I would say, like, the number one resource that my kids absolutely went crazy for in primary school, and I wasn't a fan until I saw the results, was TT Rockstars. Oh, Rockstars. yes, yes, yes. So I, I miss so run, I used good. to run that in my old school, and I, would, I do miss that it. It's so amazing, good, honestly. <laughs> so you, yeah, so you, you hit can the nail on the spot you can set up leagues, you can have average response time. It yeah. works you through the different timetables from two all the way up to 12. 
uh, progressively difficult, then you can get random. And, you know, my, my son used to challenge me on it, and he used to beat me because he was so good at the uh, it was the app. I mean, obviously, I'm way, way smarter than him. <laughs> <laughs> it goes without saying. Yeah. But, like, you know, but no, literally, he should challenge, and it was a lot of fun for him and, yeah. and his friends as well. So I remember his whole class just really loved it. So that's a really good app for, for people who might want to be uh, looking at primary primary mathematics. That's right. No, no, I agree with you. I think that it's, it's something that, um, you know, even in secondary, we're trying to, you know, we've got competition between the houses, uh, whoever's the fastest and the correct answers. It does really Brilliant. help. And we see the benefit of it in our lessons when we are doing some sort of calculation, working on area of a shape. You know, they're not sure. having to spend or, you know, do the multiplication, uh, take time. So they're able to get to that really, really quick. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask, you know, uh, as you mentioned, with us with being... You know, I agree with you. There is obviously, we can take the good things from each of our cultures and, you know, merge it together to create, a, you know, like you said, um, a friendly environment for a child to benefit. Sure. So, you know, and do you, I mean, yourself, obviously, who's been educated and, you know, you are aware of what's going on in terms of schools and there's no language barrier issue. What would you say for parents? And, you know, I'm just putting the question out there. What would you say for parents who may not be as educated and may uh, find it difficult, whereas their child is the translator of the house. So I'm talking about perhaps maybe a child who's in year eight, for example. For parents who may be in that sort of situation, you know, I just want to first say we are out here, you know, we can speak, you know, Punjabi, Urdu. If there's anyone out there that needs more information on this schooling, and I'm sure anyone... We're here to help, and there's loads of places out there that they can they also get support from. But is there anything that you would recommend? Of you, know, you might have friends that probably are in a similar similar situation. How would a parent like such, in that sort of situation, get involved sure. with education journey for their child and be that create that supportive environment like you Could have for you? Be as active as you mentioned. Yeah, no, that's an excellent question. I'd say I'd say if you're English speaking parent of Pakistani descent who didn't get educated, because we've got a few friends. Absolutely, you know, they're in that position where they didn't go on to go to university or anything like that. They need to be listening to this show, genuinely, not a plug for your show, but they need to. If they're interested, if they want their children to succeed, they need to be tapping up their friends who might be teachers. That's what we might be, be telling them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, that's exactly. And they need to defer to your better judgment and knowledge. They mm. need to. The problem is sometimes people are arrogant and they say, oh, I'm all right, I didn't get educated, my kids will be fine. And it's like, well, that's not a good... That's not a good yeah. start to take. They need to be open-minded. For the, for the parents, unfortunately, for the parents who neither are English-speaking, so you might have, you know, like um, immigrant families who have come to the UK, refugee families. Mm. Uh, I know a lot of those, maybe, you know, recent, recent influx of uh, Eastern Europeans who, who don't have English as a first language. So I'm sure there's lots of problems there. Unfortunately, like they are on a bit of a hiding to nothing, like like I was and my generation was. So yeah. our parents had no idea and we lost so many talented people yeah. uh, because they mm. just didn't have the control at home. Mm. And I think that's where teachers really do earn their corn. You guys need to understand that. I mean, you'd classify somebody like that in that kind of position as vulnerable. Yeah. When I used to do translations at the doctor's surgery for my mum, I used to think that was normal. And now mm. I'm a fully grown adult and, I used to, and now I'm thinking back thinking, Oh my God, like that was literally, I was a vulnerable child mm, because yes. I was involved in that kind of, you know, I was, that was the kind of responsibility I was forced to take. Yeah. At the time, you don't think about it, but later on in life, you reflect. So yeah, I think, I think you guys definitely have to try and spot those individuals and, and try and provide them with the support network. If you can get TAs who are of yeah, that culture, that's... of that language, you can support them. Um, added support after school clubs, which I know you guys do. Yeah. Um, I know you guys do, you know, coming up to GCSEs, you do like those booster sessions for That's people right. with you know, English as a second language. All that stuff is brilliant, but I mean, it's vital that they get that support because we, we didn't get that support. I think uh, just on that point as well, if, if your child has a parent's evening and, you know, English is not your first language, um, you know, with multicultural schools where you've got teachers, TAs working from all different backgrounds, let your teacher know, I don't understand English. They will get someone to translate for you. Um, I, I've been having that situation and I've got someone that speaks the same language. Um, oh, yeah. I, it just, you know, so 
yes, your child can translate, but sometimes there could be misinformation. Uh, so you're not fully aware of what, you know what's being translated, or sometimes they can be cheeky. You know what kids are like nowadays. So I think um, just just speak to your school. They will have someone available for you in school. Um, also, you know some schools are starting to provide iPads to the to the students who are unable to understand English, and they use Google Translate in there. And then if they are unable to provide a TA, so there's many many support are there available. All you gotta do is just have that communication with the school and just be open up. You know these are my barriers. How can you guys help with that? Just, just. I'm just going to make one point. I'm going to let course. you guys go because I know yeah. you've got a number of things to talk about in the show. The one point I would say from a parent's perspective, so technology, I'm all for it, 100%. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I have to say, you know, you have like satchel and you have like, um, is it milk? Mm-hmm. And there's like um, <laughs> parent, parent mail, parent DX, PMX. There's, there's, there's like five, six, seven different apps. I had children at two different schools. I had seven apps to 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 track, um, just to keep up with everything. And this is why I'm I'm old fashioned. I like the book bag and the letter coming home. Yeah. Now I know we're paperless, but for parents, it's you know full time job. You know you're rushing around. You've got three children, two children, multiple schools. You cannot keep track. Whereas mm. in the olden days, there was a a planner in the child's bag I and remember the that. had the timetable and yeah. it had the homework for the next week. I mean, it's, I know you're going paperless, but just the planner, I think for, for the, uh, for the benefit of the parents, mm. stop them having eight different email logins, eight different passwords. <laughs> there's a maths app, there's a, a general app, there's a school app. It's just crazy. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I agree with you. There's, I think there's too point. much, Yeah, uh, everything. Point. I think everyone just got really excited with technology and there's been, it's There's a massive overload. Yeah. yeah, it's a massive overload. Like you said, everybody wants parents, to go paperless. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I, I think mean, to I, save I the cost as well, isn't it? Yeah. I know I, they keep a plan up until uh, year nine now. Uh, yeah. And then obviously year 10. I 11, can see it dropping, to be honest. It drops. Where, yeah. But then again, you know what? If people are raising that concern, such as yourself, I can also see a big change then happening. People were like, okay, this is too much now. We need to stick to the basic. Uh, but who knows, you know, it's a bit <laughs> like uh, parents evening, isn't it? Because we went, we went uh, <laughs> online for uh, COVID two or three yeah. years. Then this year, a lot of schools are going back to face to face because yeah. parents are or have been complaining, saying we've lost touch with the school. Yeah, we've, we've lost that sense of community and we don't know what a teacher looks like now. Um <laughs> So I know slowly yeah. the schools are going back and reverting yeah, to the old traditional systems. Yeah, and it's just a case of just keep speaking to your schools and let them know about your views. But thank you so much thank for so much, getting Jeff. in Ama- touch. Amazing points as well. No, not a problem. Listen, you guys are doing a great job. I love this show and uh, keep it going. Inshallah, I'll be on one day soon. Definitely. Well, well, you need to get me in. You need to get me in. All right, speak soon, guys. Salam alaikum. Right, thank you very much, Brother Imtiaz. So um, they were just obviously talking about one of the books that most of the primary schools use. So um, Jolly Phonics. I think it's important to, you know, these things, get them early. Like, you know, some people, like, like for example, yeah, year 11 yeah, revision, right? They'll end up buying it in year 11. Why not buy in year 10? So That's panic. Keep... That's panic buy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, what you would do on a Black Friday, thinking you're going to get, uh, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're getting some value for your money. But 100%. I think, uh, like you mentioned, it's so important to invest early on. Where mm. you can make a, a real difference. So, uh, like um, what the MTS has mentioned, there's so many uh, lost talent out there. Yeah. So, a child that na- could have had a chance of being a grade nine student if invested in early. Yeah. He but might, this investment do not have to be money. No, is no, no, no. It, no, no, of it just not. could it's be time. online it's, time. Um, it's just being engaged. Yeah. But that child, he or she might end up with, it might end up being going through life as a grade three, four student. Mm. No, no one would ever know. That it was possible to be a great nine student. Mm, I agree. And now, um, to start us uh, with our next segment, uh, question for you as a starter. <laughs> Imagine as a starter. <laughs> uh, which uh, what so, okay, yes. Yeah, so the question for you is what practical things can you comfortably, without the requirements or without the support, scaffold this support from your wife? Can you do at home? Mm, very good question, actually. Would you like to call her to ask? <laughs> Can I phone a friend? <laughs> no, um, no. To be honest with you, um, th- now that I'm thinking about it, very little. But <laughs> so that's in back. I mean, I'm not saying it, but I'm no, just no, it's saying just, uh, it's just uh, yeah, very very good question. To be honest with you, but yeah. um, 
in all in all honesty, um, qu- quite a lot of things. Like I, I could say, um, I do get involved in. Mm. Um, I want to get involved in, um, and I think going back to the whole idea of uh, now, Alhamdulillah, we've got little ones growing up. Um, I want them to be growing up and, and seeing that as a normal environment. As in, like uh, it could be. I get the shop I got, like yesterday. Um, yeah. I got the shopping. I put the shopping away. I know it's very very small. So you things. want your, so you want your child to. Understand that you know you You've got responsibilities. Put shopping yeah, away, yeah, of course. It. Now, you know you don't have to answer this question, but do you feel like the generation before you, so your mum and dad, do you think? I, I, to be honest with you, uh, I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah, because but I'm think, the same. Um, don't you think it's changing over time? Is it now? I'll say it's very dependent on the individual uh, yeah. themselves. If, mm. In all honesty, um, like I, I've been doing, I've been doing that from day one. So yeah. when I was living with my mum and dad. Um, now, obviously, we uh, moved away, but um, those habits have been there from day one, and and, I've, uh, and I want obviously um, it makes you independent. Yeah, but and, and there's nothing wrong with that. To be honest with you, I think you have to be, uh, and that's what we wanted to go into. So you know, in terms of life skills, there is a big, big value of teaching practical skills at home. Some of the practical skills, uh, just literally putting shopping away. Right, being able to carefully put a glass jar uh, on a shelf, right? Being able to tell the safety is out. <laughs> yeah, and also um, what else? Obviously, you know, cooking might be obviously dinner. Yeah, simple I've, cooking. I've not uh, ventured into that uh, avenue just yet. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have imagined so. <laughs> but uh, what else do? You, okay, what else can you ask? Uh, uh, you know, you got you may have nephews and nieces, primary school primary school student. What sort of activities can their parents give them? So um, I've got one, uh, my nephew Sully, who comes around and stays quite. Uh, he stays with us quite a lot. So is this Sully catch the rainbow, Sully? Ca- catch the rainbow, <laughs> the viral Sully, right? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so he comes around, stays around quite a lot, um, and honestly, he he's at a point now where he knows exactly where everything's going around our house. Literally everything. Like so he's there. All the chores. Yeah. All the uh, so we're giving him responsibilities at home. We trust him. We always uh, praise him. We reward him. Mm. Um, but mashallah, he's uh, he's come to a stage where um, I could walk through the door with him, jump on the sofa, and I could be playing my FIFA or whatever. And, and I know Sully's get- <laughs> looking after the whole house for me. And within ten minutes, it's spotless. Yeah. So um, <laughs> he's not child labour or anything. Just to put it out there, he's uh, he's getting paid. He's getting paid well. So <laughs> but he gets to play FIFA next, does he? I think, no, um, it's, it's I think you things. know, in a joking way, the point that we're trying to make, right, is, for example, some of the things that I believe are good habit, right? Let's just say you finish eating, right? Picking up your plate, putting it in the sink, or helping with the yes, washing. Yes, definitely, man. Right? Um, um, like, you know, when you come home, <clears> take <throat> your shoes off, put them where they're clothes, supposed to go. go. in the right place. Yeah, put your clothes, right, don't wait for your mum and dad to no, come no. and put your things away. I think <coughs> don't do what we did, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean times were different. Like Imtia says, times have changed. People have changed. So I think, um, as a parent, as a parent, your challenge we mentioned earlier could be you finish eating, right? Mm-hmm. Let don't let anyone get up yet. All right? You say, okay, guys, we're gonna, f- you know, you stay at the table and make sure there's no TV, no phones out on the table. Yeah, you finish eating and then you're like, okay. We're going to get up, once everyone finish, now we're going to get up. And yeah. everyone gets up at the same time. And ev- then you, mum and dad, pick your plates up. Yeah? Dad as well. Takes it to the sink. Right? Are they leaving the other plates there? What are the plates? The kids? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because they, what they're going to do? I'm just trying to picture this. Yeah. They're going to follow, aren't you? Yeah? Without you even saying anything, they are very likely to follow that. And I think... That is what we're trying to say, you know. We're trying to say set up good example, good habits that you. And if you don't pick the play up, don't let the chopper fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no choppers ever. Um, you know, a gentle reminder. Rather than saying, "Why do you not get pick the play up?" It could be like, "Okay, right, guys, we're gonna help mum out, right? We're gonna pick up the plates after we yeah, eat." Eight, yeah, that's what's gonna be. I've got a question for you. Mm. In which country? Were Chapel sold out, <laughs> um, and it's not uh, England. 
all I want to say, uh, big shout out to <laughs> Bata. <laughs> Bata, the chapel makers. As many of they you know. They had to restock. Eh? <laughs> Bata, uh, thank you for, you know. Uh, your uh, lifelong supply. Long life supplies. And uh, we, we learned a lot because of you. Right. So, just to sum up, you know, as we are closing uh, to the end. We've got another a minute or so. You know, the main theme that we picked up, whether your child is in primary or secondary, okay, let's stop, let's stop saying no. Don't do this, don't do that. Yeah? Um, and let's just change our terminology that we use. Yeah, Even just, better, uh, yeah, don't just, use the terminology. Just, strategies. just show them. Yeah, just I, show yeah them. I like that, uh, what you said earlier, just um, that challenge you, you said earlier. Yeah. Observe them for a week, yeah. have something in your mind that you want them to change, and without saying what you want them to change, show them through action, Yeah. Uh, and hopefully they will uh, implement it. Um, but also a massive thank you for Brother Imtiaz's phone call, M made some really, really valuable points, um, and hopefully more people can get involved as well. I'll pass it back to you, Mr. Akram. Thank you so much for listening uh, with Education Matters. We've been looking about education at home. Inshallah, we'll be back next week for another show. Take care and assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Stay tuned to